Hi everyone, I am Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs. I am coming to you from kind of chilly but nicer today in New Hampshire. So when you guys come on, please come on and say hi. Let me know where you are watching from. And I always ask, tell me what your weather was like where you're at because I like hearing what it was like in other places. Uh, tonight, I'm going to do something that is a little outside of how I usually paint. I'm a colorful type of person and I'm going to do white. So those of you who know me know that white is like not my thing. Usually it's not my jam, man. Typically isn't, but I just, for some reason, this piece was calling to me about white and I thought, what a great way for me to go over the easiest ways for you to paint white with the Dixie Belle paints. All right. So again, Hey, Dixie Belle's on everybody. So as we go through the, the thing tonight, through our live tonight, if you guys have questions that I'm painting and I don't see it, just to let you know, Dixie Bell is on here. They will answer the questions for you. And when you come on, please say hi again. Let me know where you're watching from. And um, I also, you know what? I always ask like a certain thing about my things. So tonight I want to know how many of you guys have used the whites from Dixie Bell? Because they have amazing coverage, like amazing coverage. Um, so I'm just curious. So, uh, let me see, Tasha's from Suffolk, Virginia. Nice, nice. Hello, Dawn. All right, so this piece right here um, was laminate, actually, laminate covered. I'm leaning down because I am actually gonna try and get onto the floor, which is difficult for me. Hey, Cheryl from Jacksonville, another Cheryl. And then hi in Alabama. Um, I'm gonna get down on the floor and paint after. <laughs> But for now, I have my seat here, and then I'm gonna lower the camera so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. It's I always think it's best that, you know, you see what I'm painting, and you don't need to necessarily see my face, right? You just wanna see what I'm painting. All right, so this, this cabinet actually is a really, really solid, solid built wood with a laminate covering. So um, because I had a laminate covering, I needed to put a primer on this. So. Everybody's going to ask, what primer did you use? If you're not familiar with Dixie Bell's primers, it's really important you know the differences, okay? So, there's two primers with Dixie Bell. There's Boss, which is right here. That's what you use on wood. It stops odors, stains, and bleed through. All right, it comes in white, clear, and now um, we actually are going to be having another product coming out next week, or I think it's two weeks, actually, that you guys are going to love the new boss all right so boss is for wood all right you don't need it for any other stuff it is for wood slick stick that's what's on this baby back here this is an adhesion primer you use an adhesion primer on laminate metal glass plastic um, anything that you need your paint that is not porous it's not a porous surface that you need your paint to adhere to so let me give you a little bit of hint okay Somebody said they just ordered the gray. Was it the gray boss? Yes, I'm really excited to try it. Mine hasn't come in yet. So, um, slick stick. So let me give you a little bit of a hint when you're painting with white, guys. White absolutely, absolutely uses more coats than other paints. It doesn't matter what you try, you're always gonna use more coats. And it's just the way that the compound's made. It's the way that the pigments are in it. So what is my trick when I use white? I prime. Even if I don't need to prime, I prime. And the reason I personally do that, not everybody does, but the reason I do that is I would rather put one coat of a good primer on here and then have a base for my white to just lay on naturally than to keep going back and doing multiple coats of the white and be going, oh, it just feels like it didn't cover right. White is one of the most difficult colors to get good coverage. The good news is Dixie Belle's whites are amazing so they do have a lot more coverage than any other paint that I've ever worked with and so they will cover very very well what are we gonna use tonight we're gonna use fluff all right you guys know the whites are cotton so somebody out here is talking about cotton so cotton yes cotton is more of an arctic white fluff is more of your white that has just a little tiny bit of gray in it but it's just enough to kind of mute it a little bit so it's not arctic and then there's drop cloth. Drop cloth has just a tiny bit of a tan look to it. Sandbar as well has, it's a little bit, more, has a little bit of a, a beige kind of tint to it. 
And then Sawmill Gravy, which is one of my other favorites that's in the white family, has a little bit of a taupe tint to it. So, but you, for your absolute whites, you're going to go with either fluff or cotton. Like I said, cotton is an art, on like an arctic, like bright, bright white. And fluff has just a little bit of a mute to it, so you can see those differences, and it's not like bang in your face, which is kind of like what I like. Nancy said, I just bought fluff. Hey, Nancy. Nancy's one of my girls. Just bought fluff. I haven't used it yet. Nancy, you're going to love your fluff. All right. So tonight, we're going to paint this. I actually wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I almost did it in Vintage Duck Egg, and then I was like, it's just calling to me. like Because this is the original hardware that came with it. So isn't that awesome? So I wanted to be able to stay something with a theme that I could use that. So I was like, why not the white? And then distress the edges and kind of give it a little bit of farmhouse look. And I might even use a little bit of brown glaze on the edges. So Tammy said she just painted with fluff today. Awesome. All right, guys. So I'm going to start painting. I'm going to be using my Dixie Belle um, Oval Medium and my Dixie Belle Flat Small. The reason I'm using two different brushes is because when I get in here to these little areas, I like using my flat small because then I don't have to worry as much about going over the actual edges or taping. For me, that just works well. Um, I think I talk about this on every one of my lives, so I'm gonna talk about it again. Your tools are your baby. So if you haven't invested in some really good brushes and you're say, you know, I have people come all the time that say to me, I don't feel like my finish goes on right. First of all, I'm not sure, I would really like to talk to you if that's the case because I can kind of help you with why it's not going on right. It may not even be a brush, but a proper brush will give you the best finish in the world. Like it takes away so many of your problems. So if you can invest on in a good brush, I suggest you invest in a good brush. All right, so here we go. I am going to get on the ground, and I say this every time I get on the ground, if I can't get up, anybody that's on here that knows me and my husband, could you call my husband to come into my workshop and get me off the floor? Because <laughs> sometimes I can't get back up right. All right, here we go. I'm going to get down on the ground, and I'm actually going to move this just a little bit closer. And you guys, if you don't see my face as I'm painting, I think you'd rather see what I'm painting and not my face, right? And I'll still be chatting the whole time and explaining what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to lower this down. Excuse my hands in front of the camera. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start over here. And again, if you guys see me can't get off the floor, call my husband, please. All right, I put my paints in these dispenser bottles. So... Um, the reason I put them in here is because I don't, especially when I'm using my larger ones, I don't want to keep dipping my brush inside of the paint and contaminating my paints. So I put them in here. You can get them at any uh, like web, web restaurant store. Put your paints in here. That way you're dispersing to only what you need and you're not wasting, right? So I'm going to put some over here. And I use these little bowls. All right, here's the other thing, guys. When you go to paint, you always should have... A fine mist bottle it's a continuous mist so the way that this works is it just gives that continuous mist I always dampen my brushes before I paint just because anytime you paint with anything and again another thing I tell on all of my lives it doesn't matter if you're painting glass furniture walls anything that you're doing you should always dampen your brush first and the reason being is um, it helps the paint load to your brush all right so before I start, I quickly want to tell you guys that any of the stuff that I'm using tonight, the slick stick, the fluff, um, even the brushes when they do come back in stock, they're not in stock online right now, but a lot of the retailers still have some in stock. So reach out to your local retailer. How do you find your local retailer? Go into the description and there is a link that says to find your local retailer. If you cannot find a local retailer near you, reach out to me and I can actually throw stuff on the group. Anything that I don't have, I can ask one of the local retailers that I work with if anybody has one for you, okay? All right, guys, here we go. Oh, Lord forgive me if I can't get up. Just remember, here we go. All right, so I want you to see how smooth this goes on once you've actually primed. Can you see that? Like, because this has this nice primer on here, it goes on really smooth. Now, I always do my grooves first because I want to get all my grooves in here done. Then it's less that I need to work the paint around to make sure that it's getting in there. And if you guys can see, I don't use a lot of paint on my brush 
because you don't need a lot of paint to get good coverage with Dixie Belle. Um, I have people that will reach out and say, oh, I used so much paint when I was painting, and I don't know how you use such little paint. It's because um, I'm just, I know the coverage, so when you're painting, you just have to remember that Dixie Belle's coverage is amazing, and you don't always need a lot of paint on here. All right, so look at, I did all around these inside edges here, which I'm probably gonna wind up accenting with um, either some brown wax or some black wax because it does go really nice in those edges. It'll look beautiful. Then I'm actually gonna go to the center here. Now, as I'm putting this on, as you can see, sometimes I go all different directions. On the first coat I do, but then I come back in and I kind of try and go the same direction because I want it to even out. But when I do my second coat, I'm gonna use my Mr. Bottle and it'll make it nice and fine so you guys can, it'll take out any of the, the any marks that you have in here, any brush strokes. All right, so another thing, I was explaining to somebody the other night um, and I never realized that people say, well, when you watch the lies, it looks like people are like, that we push in on our paintbrushes, a lot of the, ladies and gentlemen that come on here and do lives it's not true we don't push down on our brushes unless we're doing a specific um, technique you it looks like it but the reality is, is you just got to let the brush do the work for you right so that's what they're made for they're made to do the work for you I am barely touching my piece right now it looks like I'm pushing down on it but I'm actually barely touching it and that's what's actually giving me that smooth finish Come up in here I'm not worried I'm gonna get paint on here because I'm gonna be doing something and I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna be doing on it I just saw somebody's talking about the Morocco stencils yeah the stencils are gonna be awesome guys I love the stencils I love any stencil so um, I do a lot of crafting projects with Dixie Belle and I use their stencils on them um, so that'll be nice as I have all the old stencils still that we used to carry all right so I am going, this is my first coat, and look at the coverage on that first coat. I'm gonna bring this just a little bit closer so you guys can see the kind of coverage that this actually brings. Look at that. So that is our first coat, and look at the coverage on that. Like, that's crazy. It's so insane, that coverage, that there's areas of it, if I didn't have to, I would only have to do one coat because of the way the coverage is. All right, so now I'm gonna go, I'm actually gonna bring this out just a little bit again, just so I can do the bottom and you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm trying not to get my head in the way of what I am painting, but something tells me it is. All right. Look at how smooth that goes on, like seriously. I always tell everybody it's like bada, like bada. That's the New England in me, it's like bada. All right, so I'm giving you some tips here, but I have to tell you guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, we have our Chalk Paint Enthusiast Group, and that is, a link to that as well, is in the description. If you haven't joined it yet, you definitely want to check it out. There's lots of ideas, there's tips, all, um, there's a, all of the brand ambassadors are on there. They give lots of advice. Um, they're eager to help. So if you haven't joined it, go up into the description, check it out, and join the group. I'm going to pour myself a little bit more paint. All right. So unfortunately, because of the way I'm painting, I can't see all the comments right now. But if you're just coming on, my name is Cheryl, and I am with JJ Bean Designs. And tonight I am explaining how to get amazing coverage with fluff and other white paints from Dixie Bell. Now what I did already to start, if you're just coming on, is I actually started with a slick stick. And because this is a laminate base, um, it's a very heavy wood, but it's a laminate cover over the wood. So because of that, I did start with slick stick. If you're not aware of what slick stick is, Slick Stick is an adhesion primer, which is what you want to use for your paints to bond 
onto your stuff that is not wood. Can you guys see how that goes on? Like, look how smooth that is. This is literally the first coat, and I give all the credit to Slick Stick. It's awesome. If you paint it with whites before, which has always been a nightmare for me, I'm just not a, I'm not a white person. Not just because of how the coverage typically is with white paints, but I just like a lot of color in my life. <laughs> so I tend to paint with color stuff. So, um, but painting using the primers first totally opens up a whole new avenue. So I do know that this opens up and I'll be doing inside of those doors after, but I'm gonna paint up to the doors so that I actually have that ability to open them after. So when you come on, please say hi, let me know where you're from. And uh, tell me, I'd like to hear some of you guys' tricks. Some of the people are on here, I know are regulars on here because I've seen some names as I was pointing through and checking out. Tell me your tricks that you use for whites with the Dixie Belle paints on your furniture. I'd love to, love to hear them. All right, so remember I told you I was gonna use the secondary brush? I'm gonna use the secondary brush in here. So one of the things that I do is I always, always paint in and here, even if the drawers cover it, because there's always gonna be a time that it peeks through and I wanna be able to have it fully complete so that if somebody pops this open, they're gonna see the white there. They're not gonna see um, like half white, half brown, kinda of messed up. So I'm gonna take this. Now, because I'm taking a break with this and I don't want it to dry out, I'm just gonna lightly mist my brush, All right? I'm gonna put it down on my piece over here. I'm gonna start with my flat small. And now I'm gonna go over here and just get in here. See how much easier it is when you're using that small brush to just get into those areas and not get all the way up. You don't have to tape off your stuff at that point. It just goes smooth right across the fronts of those drawers. All right, so we got those fronts done, right? Just wanna double check this one. I'm gonna do up here and then on that side, and then I'm actually going to take the drawers and slide them part way in so that we can paint them. I just wanna get this started up in this area. I always paint this top area without the drawers in because I wanna make sure that I get everything completely covered before I put my drawer in. I don't want it to get on there. So, um, hey Deb, Deb says replay. You don't have to replay, I'm actually live right now. We'd love to have you ask your questions if you have any, Deb. All right guys, the drawers are right here. I'm gonna pop these babies in and then we're gonna do the fronts of the drawers. And you guys will get to see even more how nice it goes on. Watch, I'm not lining it up, right? trying to do it sideways so I don't block the camera. So I'm gonna lead them part way out like this. And what I do is I actually stagger them. So I'll do the first one. And now remember I, I sprayed it, but I'm gonna spray it again. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do this top area. Isn't that awesome? So. Again, like I said, when you prime for any whites, it literally helps tremendously. It says, where did I get the rolling stands? Everybody always asks that. Um, so the rolling stands are actually from um, Harbor Freight, but you can also get them on Amazon. I have two different kinds. I'm gonna be honest with you, this time is not my absolute favorite, but they work great with a piece like this that has a big flat bottom to it. Um, anything that has legs and stuff to it, I use these other ones that actually have it dented on the inside of them. And um, so it holds your piece a little bit better. But they are great because I can roll all my stuff around. I roll them all around my garage. And uh, while I'm doing my stuff. All right. Look at that. All right, so here comes my next thing. I'm painting here 
but because my brush has been kind of sitting out, I'm going to mist it a little bit, even though it's my first coat, because I felt like my paint was dragging. So what does it mean when your paint's dragging? When you go to paint your piece, and you're painting part of it, and all of a sudden you realize that your paint is not as smooth going across, that is paint dragging, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to actually go ahead and um, mist it, and just kind of help that paint along a little bit. So that's the first door, drawer, door, drawer, door, door, drawer, you know, same thing. Guys, I am really proud of myself that I'm on the floor right now, and I think I can actually move to the other side to grab this drawer. Ah. If you guys just came on also, please introduce yourself, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. I am Cheryl with JGB Designs, and tonight we are going over how to use fluff and paint a piece to get it so that um, you're getting these perfect white colors without having to worry about other, about having to do multiple, multiple coats. Um, Dixie Belle does have awesome coverage. Um, reality, I've used tons of different paints. Everybody who has asked me, why do you use Dixie Belle paints? Is it because you're affiliated with them? It's not just that. In all honesty, I've used every paint that's out there and the coverage with Dixie Belle is amazing. Look at that. Look at that white. Like seriously, do you always see white go on like with that much of a coverage? Most paints, you're looking at at least three, sometimes four, different coats to get the white on. This white is covering amazing. But I also prep first and primed. All right, so the other drawer is on the other side. So guys, remember my, my thing, look out for me because if you see me not being able to get up, you guys, because somebody's got to reach out to my husband. Oh. All right, here we go. You ready? We're gonna go ahead. I'm going to push this one in just a tiny bit. I'm using the bottom rail to do it. Actually, I'll leave it like that. Now I'm going to put this one in. And like I said before, I try to stagger my drawers a little bit because so I can get underneath them when I max them. Um, do you use top coat of some? I can't see what says what it says, so you use a top coat. I always use a top coat on my furniture, and the reason being is, is not because Dixie Belle actually cures within 30 days, and it cures very well. The reason I use a top coat is because typically I'm doing either for my store, or I'm actually doing a custom order, and it has to be picked up within the 30 days. So um, I do use a top coat. I use the Dixie Belle Satin, and my new favorite that has been like to die for for me on top of wood anyways is the Dixie Belle gloss. If you guys haven't tried the Dixie Belle gloss, oh, it's amazing. Um, and I see Dixie Belle's answer about the durability. Yes, the durability of Dixie Belle paints is insane. Like I said, you don't have to. I choose to do a top coat on mine because I absolutely have to most of the time because it's a custom order that somebody wants to pick up within 30 days, so. All right, so we've done the whole front of this. I'm actually, let me see how these are, these are starting to dry a little bit. I am gonna try and move this, see if I can get this moved. You guys, I'm gonna have to back this up and I'm gonna try and turn this baby around a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it its best shot, okay? See if we can get to the other side over here and get this side piece here. Whoa, all right. So you guys can't see as well over here, but I'm gonna put that coat on here while we're painting. And I'm glad I turned to the side because I'm realizing that on this door, on this side, I did miss a little bit by the hinges. And I do put my paints in the bowls we talked about this before. I put them actually in a container that I can pour them out. The containers I, um, you can get on Amazon. You can get them at Websterant online. The reason I do that is because especially when I have my large containers like this of fluff, um, I don't want to taint the paint by sticking my brush in. If there's anything on the piece that I absolutely missed, which can happen um, when I was doing the cleaning, 
I don't want to taint my paint that I have um, so that I don't have it all ruined. So I take it and I put it all into a bowl and then I paint. I love the coverage of this paint. All right, we're gonna go into here, and then I think I'm gonna roll this back, and we're gonna try and pop these doors and see about getting inside the doors. Let me roll this back over. You gotta be careful because um, the one thing about these rollers on the bottom is they do um, tend to slide sometimes, so I gotta be really careful with them. All right, let me pull this this way. There we go. All right, guys. Push this forward. Much better. All right, so I am going to use my handy-dandy door opener, otherwise known as the screwdriver. And we're going to go in here. Let me pop this drawer just a little bit shut. Let me see. I'm going to pop this. Watch, this is not going to open that easy for me. The, the um, hatch on this, the latch is like, Mm, super, super strong. I'm going to bring this just a little bit closer so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Back up. So I am not doing the insides. I'm actually going to leave them natural wood, but I am going to have to paint in and around here. So I'm just going to take my medium flat, I mean my small flat again. I'm going to do right in here. And I tend to do this part as one of the last parts. I do the fronts first. And the reason being is I want to be able to, if I have to push on the front, I want to be able to push on it without worrying. And now I'm going to slide this door open. And we're going to get down. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. You know, the nitty nitty gritty. Now, I haven't decided what to do with the top yet, so that's why the top looks the way it does. It had a ton of um, divots in it. That's how I realized that it was so much of a laminate on the top of it. So what I did, it probably I think it had a hutch like screw to the top of it. So if you guys can see that top area, let me see if I can get it. See that? That's actually Dixie Belle mud that I mudded the top with. Um, if you haven't used Dixie Belle mud before, it is amazing. It's just like, feels like drywall mud when you're using it. But it, um, it does great for when you have holes. Um, I, yeah, I use it to fix smaller items with veneer. I don't use it with really large issues with veneer, but I do use it with smaller items. And it has a way of covering so nicely. All right. So I'm just trying to use my brush to make this edge. I don't take my furniture off, but if you take your brush and you push it down, it can actually make an edge for you um, so that you make sure that you get it in there correctly. All right, guys, you ready? We're gonna swing around to this side a little bit. All right, let's get to that other door. That one's gonna be fun. All right, so this other door is the one that I'm actually, I think is the one that has the really like, really heavy duty latch on it. So it latches very, very well. Let me see here. I'm gonna push this just a little bit. Push this one in just a little bit. Now I'm noticing my drawers are sticking a little bit. And the reason being is, is the track itself. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of Mama's Butter. If you guys have not used Mama's Butter yet, that's another nifty thing from Dixie Belle. It's great. It's like a salve. Um, and people use it for their... Um, their drawers for the inside to make them smell better, um, to recondition the wood. I also use it to do the bottoms of my rails of my drawers because what it does is it makes it way easier to open up those drawers and um, to open up the drawers and slide. And um, it works great. I give it to my, I actually give my customers a little bit of it too. Most of the, if I've used it on their piece so that they know that they can use it. All right, I'm gonna paint again. We're gonna do the top. I'm gonna open this up all the way so that we can get in here. And then down here. 
And again, I'm pushing my brush on that edge to make that edge because it is not taped off and I don't want to go into the wood area. So I'm just using my brush and pushing my brush. If you guys can see that, I'm praying you guys can see that um, to make that edge for me. And then I'm going to go up here. All right. Now I did get paint in the inside here. So I'm going to give you a little trick that we all use. These are baby wipes. If you take baby wipes where you get paint that you don't want it, you can easily just wipe it off. All right, there we go. So that is how I start my whites. I'm gonna back this up just a little bit so that we can go over some stuff. All right, everyone. So I'm gonna recap again what I did here before I did my whites. I started with Slick Stick. And I used Slick Stick because I have laminate on here and I wanted my paint to be able to stick. So I use Slick Stick. It's an adhesion primer and I actually, whenever I do any type of whites, I will always prime. So if it's a regular wood, I use boss. And I use the white boss because I'm gonna be using white and it just makes it lay down very, very nicely. Very nicely. All right, so let's see if we can close this baby up and try and get our doors to get back in again. All right guys, so I'm gonna bring you over here. Let's do our door. All right, so now we're on the second coat. This is where I always try and go over the second coat with you guys because there are people that don't understand how to use their sprayers. Let me push this in first real quick. All right, so when you're gonna use your second coat, you always wanna use your continuous spray sprayer. I spray my brush first. Some people spray their piece, some people spray their brush. I actually do both, but I have enough paint on here right now that I'm gonna start by just my brush. If you can see, that just makes the paint lay on so nice, right? And now I'm gonna, now I'm just gonna put just a little bit on my brush. I don't have a bunch on here, but I'm actually gonna spray my piece. And I just lightly misted it. You don't want it wet. You just want it enough to help push that paint around. And that little bit of paint that I had on my brush is now doing that second coat. And it's just that smooth coat that's just evening it out. Perfect. You guys see how much I even that out? Let me see if I bring this close so you guys can see that. Can you guys see how that even that all out? It's just using that mister is the key to using a second coat when you're working with the paints. So I just barely missed it. There we go. Now, I did notice on this drawer that I have some um, drips from when I did my primer, I didn't realize it. So before I finish painting this drawer, I'm probably gonna take it out and I'm gonna sand those edges just to bring down that primer so I don't have a drip mark. I actually have one on this one as well. Um, if you get drip marks, you try, wanna try and get them before it gets to this point, but if you do, you can take a sandpaper and lightly sand it back in order to get those drip marks up. All right, so guys, any of the products that I am using tonight, you can find in the link above um and find your local retailer we do want you to try and give to your local retailer you always want to give to small business because they want to support, support small business right um if you do not have a local retailer my information is there as well i have all my social media links and the other thing is is in the description is the chalk pain enthusiast group if you haven't joined it yet i'm telling you it is a here's my big word of the night plethora of information there's so much information on there for everybody there's the brand ambassadors there's people like myself who just love painting and have learned from the brand ambassadors and everybody is always willing to answer questions for you and help you with any questions you may have so um, make sure you join the chalk paint enthusiast group and by the way Keep your eye out in the next couple weeks. There's a, some, some new stuff coming out from Dixie Bell that's going to be really fun to have uh, on the market and have you guys all try. But I am going to call just a little bit early tonight um, because 
we are at a kind of an impasse right here while I wait for the rest of this to dry off. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I believe I am on next week and I will see you next Thursday at eight o'clock. If you enjoyed the video, please follow me on my social media. And remember, we always have lives on here with lots of information, sometimes fun, sometimes quirky and always informative. So make sure you, you tune in for all the lives from just not myself, but other people. Have a great night.